I'm so proud of my city and I love sharing everything about my city with other people that I meet, with other mayors, with people at all levels of government. The discussion about the state flag was happening and I saw all this civic engagement about the design of a state flag moving from a seal, complex design to something simple. That prompted me to take a look at our Sandy design. I wanted the people of Sandy to choose the design for our city because it's so important that we feel that connection, that sense of pride, and I don't really look at the current design as something historic. It's a cool design. It was more of a corporate logo, but like I said, it was missing that civic engagement. We are so lucky to have Colonial Flag right in Sandy. A vexillologist is someone who studies all aspects of flags, everything from the protocol, the history, the design, any aspect of flags in general. I always start with the legal description to figure out what exactly is the flag supposed to be. Nowhere in Sandy City's code does it describe a flag. So technically, Sandy City doesn't have an official flag. They have the logo and the branding guide and marketing tools, but officially, legally, there is no flag defined in the code. You can codify the one you have, or you can take a perfect opportunity to get the community's input and say what represents your community. I'm a forward-looking mayor. I want something that suits our city for this modern era. So this is when they fly presently. It takes the Sandy City logo and puts it on a rectangular field. The colors here are simple and everything else, but the problem you're gonna run into, like with most cities along the Wasatch Front, is that if you see it from the back side, you can't read it, which is why lettering and numbers don't work on a flag. They work great on a wall hanging, but not on, on a flag when it's supposed to be up in the air. There are, are five essential rules. It has to be simple, easy enough for a school age kid to draw it from memory. No more than three or four colors for simplicity, no letters or numbers on it. It has to be recognizable from a distance and it has to be unique. I add to that, it has to have emotional significance to the community it represents. It becomes a single unifying symbol for a community to rally behind. And so at community events and such, if everyone is displaying the city flag, they're wearing the city colors, it becomes a massive unifying piece. The logo that we've been using for the past less than 20 years is one image, but it's not the historic image of Sandy. We're not upending something that is steeped in tradition. We're being very deliberate about communicating who we are as a community that we will proudly display in our buildings. Jackets, coffee cups, stickers, something that Sandy will be known for. I hope the end result turns out to be a good, solid, unifying flag that you see all over the place, whether they're flying it from different businesses, community parks, parades, all that good stuff. The more you promote the city and the more community pride you build, the more you get to know your neighbors. And that's the hope I get. We are a very proud community. People love living in Sandy, and I think it's wonderful to have a sticker or an image, no matter where you are in the world, people will see that. And if they don't know, they'll ask about it because it'll be very unique, whatever it, we end up with. And so it will be a great conversation starter. And then once people get to know it, it will be instantly identifiable. And also it will be part of the future of Sandy. So many of the design concepts were submitted by school children and the youth of our city. And I'm so proud that they were able to participate and take ownership of this design contest.